down to the bottom here. There's the bottom. Got a white plastic on. That's a bite. fishing, jigging, drop shot, um, got a little point maybe two miles or so away, we're going to try and uh, sneak in on a pull out and uh, do a hundred yard drag or so to some water and get out to a good uh, known jigging spot and get a limit of max and uh, hopefully this snow, some areas look pretty deep, but uh, be able to find somewhere to sneak in I imagine. It is considerably colder, it's uh, 17 degrees, uh, it was like 24, 25 in town. Looks like we got at the parking spot and it does look to be like a parking spot. And I'm going to have to put my snow boots on though. Glad I brought those because it says no overnight parking. So we're good. But yeah, this is about knee high snow berm here. And nice little pull out so this definitely is like a day access right here that people are using there's a house with lights on over there but uh yeah lakes uh buddy so yeah I figured this would be a good lure I've been using it for the walleye a green version but they always like white up here and the problem I normally have is keeping it the presentation good on it you know like keeping the plastic up because you get so many bites and you're so deep that it's uh annoying when you get a bite and you got to re redrop reel up check your and so this has that keeper on it you can see all the bubbles coming up from him um, so this works and 
doesn't sink super fast, but it gets down there pretty good. It's three quarters of an ounce. There you can see big old stack of fish on the Garmin. This is the um, this is the Chirp EcoMap Four, or no, the Striker Four. Striker Four, and this one has the uh, the mapping capabilities on it, which is nice because then you can get waypoints on these piles of fish, even on this little tiny finder. It's got it's picking those fish up there just as good as my nine inch, you know. So you don't need a lot. I was kind of curious about that. I know the power on this is probably like 350 watts versus like 500, I think, on my 9. So, um, we're 130 feet, and it's still picking them up, you know? Fairly calm, so no rush to get a limit. Just getting started, we've had 10 or 12 bites and three fish, and it's, what, 8.30? I mean, I've been here for 30 minutes, and I've got three fish to the boat. Try and hold that rod tip up so you can see if anything grabs it. Basically, you just want to drag it along. There's a fish. <laughs> it's non stop, like I said. Thank you.
gonna have to start keeping a couple of these. See this one looks like a good eater for some reason. I don't know why. See how thick it is? Usually these are the ones that have the super bright orange meat. Most of them are pretty good, but for some reason. That's the kind of ones you want. Look, I got wrapped up in the line. I mean, it's like, if it's more than a minute or two, then you're probably in the wrong spot. It should take like a couple seconds to get a bite. Miss that one. He's back. Nope, missed him again. Didn't miss that one. Oh. Uh, I've never had this happen. Oh, I snagged it, that's why. It's a good fish, though. Well, maybe I didn't. Got that trailer. Sometimes that stinger's deadly. <laughs> Better dive down for the meagle to see ya. as low as 14 so a little colder than what I was anticipating but uh, beat sitting at home got up at 430 grabbed a few things was on the road probably by five got uh, launched got to the spot about seven and then took about 30 minutes to throw some boots on and 
get it, unpack everything and load, drag the boat. So, um, started, started paddling about 7.30, got here about 8, and it is 9.15, and we've probably had 8 or 10 fish to the boat. I mean, look at this, this is a stack of fish on the bottom all day long. I like, like keeping them about that size, that's, that's a good, you know, three pound or better fish. And, uh, limit six, so a few of those adds up pretty good. Well, there's a bottom, let's see what we got. Oh, I got a fish already. I'm just trying to move my glove, and this guy just grabbed it. They are hungry today. That's beautiful out. Those are some good heavy marks there. So yeah, I got the kayak outfitted. It's got a cigarette output. It's got interior lights, it's got navigation lights, it's got a little pole that I can clip on and detach if you don't want the pole out there. Uh, it's got a USB, dual USB for charging um, your phone. It's pretty sweet. Uh, kind of all the same size today. Looks like that guy's been hooked before. Oh no, he got attacked. Look at that. See if I can show you this. Something took a swipe at him. Look at that. There's teeth marks. Look at that. I mean, that's down into his flesh. You see teeth, 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 teeth right there. So what kind of fish is eating this kind of fish? You know what I mean? Big fish. And they're down there. Better watch out. I won't take you, but your buddy might. Okay. Alright, let's get this stinger hook put back in the place. And we still got that little gnarly chunk of squawfish meat. That's what that is. Dangling there. And I hook that in that tail. That way you get all the short strikes. I mean, I haven't missed too many fish today. Holy, that hook is warped. Smear some more jelly on there. Doesn't take a lot. Just kind of smear it around. And that keeper's doing good. I mean, it's got that double keeper. I've been pouring these and painting them myself. I might switch. I got a drop shot rig. I kind of want to try a little bit with a glow. Um, and I do want to try. There's some white tubes that I got. There's bone white, just like this plastic. And I've never really done well with tubes, but I've never really tried either. And they're biting pretty good today, so it'd be a good day to test that. Get shallow that way. See, with the map, you can tell where you're going. Oh, I'm not on quick draw. Quick draw. Start. There. There. So on 150, you can see I tracked up there before. So original, like the regular strikers, they'll have the tracking on the map. So I mean, you can find your way back, or you can mark waypoints and stuff, but this striker, um, I think it's like the striker plus. This one has the quick draw features, and so you can record. Um, I don't know how much actual memory it has, so I would stick with the, uh, you know, your holes or once you find fish, then start recording on those areas. But it's nice to have the GPS to drop those waypoints, you know. Um, 
makes a huge difference. When you got a big body of water like this, I mean, there's just miles and miles of water. And, you know, I've marked a few fish coming up to this point out across the, you know, the two and a half or three miles it took to get here, but not like this, you know, just a couple here or there. And so there's a reason why fish stack up in certain areas. And uh, when you're checking out new waters and you mark new fish and you trust your fish finder, then, you know, mark that. Make a note of it. Drop a waypoint. Use your electronics. Well, you can always get back to it. Especially, you know, like here, I could be 10 if it was just one little spot, which isn't the case up here. Um, then, uh, you know, that's where they're going to be. But there's been instances where that has been an issue, where they're, they're keyed on on a little 5 or 10 foot piece of structure. And that GPS really helps. So here's, you know, one fish. Back to the bottom. I think this is three fish. There's a bite right there. That's fish, right there. See that? Pulling them up. <laughs> this is a good one. We'll give him a little respect and open the drag, but... There's only been a couple of really nice fish I've caught jigging. One was 10 pounds off that island up there. And uh, it just came up like dead weight. I thought I had a log. And then it saw the boat and just took all the way back down to the bottom. And that was pretty crazy. Um, had I not loosened my drag, it would have snapped for sure. Uh, same setup, seven foot rod, eight pound leader, 30 pound braid. And I just had a feeling it was a big smart fish that had been caught a couple times. And that was the case, you know, it was 31 inch, 10 pound Mackinac. Um, so you never know. I mean, there's all the possibility in the world you could catch a really nice fish up here. I've heard even, you know, 40 pounders are still being caught out of here. Um, so you just want to be ready. If, you, if something feels a little heavy, just loosen that drag. Just remember to retighten it when you go back down. Cause then when you go to set the hook, it'll just go and you'll miss your fish. That's a keeper. That's a good sized fish there.
Well, so the glow jig worked. Ah, missed him. <laughs> I was busy uh, popping a gill on a fish that was still wiggling. And my bait hit the... Oh, freaking smacked it again. <laughs> oh, these things are aggressive today. that one. It's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. hit the bottom. Without it, it's pretty good. Might go four pounds, probably. There's a bite. Another bite. Oh, that popped. That was a huge fish. Oh, that was a huge fish. Wah, wah, wah. That was a big fish. <laughs> he felt the hook, so he probably won't be back. That's not nearly as big. A good head shake. Oh, he's a big fish down there. Yeah, that's a big fish. That's a big fish. <laughs> Keep 
popped out. <laughs> Look at that. It's a good fish there. Right about five pounds or so. I'm gonna put those back. Oh, and he ripped my tail off. Well, good timing then, I guess. Okay, just stopped here for a few minutes to snap a pick and put him in the ice box where we shoot across. Right there, off the left side of that island, there's that point. So it's a good 30, 40 minute trek. But, uh, yeah. South facing slopes are pretty snow free on the north side around the bend here where I was fishing is pretty snowy. So, yep, go back and have a good dinner. <laughs>